What's good, y'all? It's all we in here with my boy Laney K. I get a drop, you better not be where you better not be, or I better not see. You. I sent a drop, better gon' be where I said it gon' be. You better get even. I should've dropped, I've been on DD. New shit coming next season. This is Bitches crazy. and money was never the reason. Bitches was coming cause money was easy. It's whatever with whoever. Tell your shooter and them do better. Uh, never will I ever take my foot up off the pedal. Uh, rock out heavy metal. Uh, Glock out when I met her. Uh, she know I'm a rebel. I've been dancing with the devil. I'm a risk taker, heartbreaker. Shawty wanna rent, pay her. Big player. Yeah. I got on a wrist breaker. Bitch, pay her. I am not a bitch saver. Bitch, wake her. Gotta talk, you heard that. That's an exclusive, huh? Yeah. That's an exclusive. Yeah. Ooh, that's crazy, bro. That's crazy. What's the name of that joint? Um, it's called Mr. McQueen. It's dropping everywhere June 16th, 2023. It's gonna be my first release in a while, actually. So I'm super excited for it. And if you didn't hear, cause that song was banging. I'm in here with my boy Lanny Keys. What up? What up? Tell him where to get your music, spell it for him, make sure they know where to get it. L-A-N-E-Y-K-E-Y-Z. You can find my music anywhere. All DSPs, all music streaming platforms, YouTube, Spotify, Apple Music, iTunes, Deezer. Anywhere where you go to listen to music, you'll find me. Bet, bet, bet. And we got a lot to talk about, bro, because I've been checking out your music, and you got some crazy features. i seen, we've been talking a little bit off camera. You haven't dropped in two years. Yeah, it's been a so, while. So we got a, we got a lot to cover today. We got a lot to cover today. I'm excited to get to know you because I personally, like, I just love looking for new music. And, like, when I took the time to check out all of the songs that you had out, like, legitimately, bro, you're going to be in my playlist. For, for sure. sure, man. I, for sure, for sure. I love to hear it, man. Love yeah, it. yeah, yeah. So let's start out with where you from, bro, originally. I am from Oakland, California. That's on Northern California, the Bay Area. Okay, okay. And let's, did you come, like, single family household? Was it two parents? Um, Were you struggling? Were you good? I, I was adopted uh, Okay. when I was 11 months old, so I grew up. In my grandma's house. Okay, okay. Um, I have five brothers and one sister. I have one younger brother and my sister is younger. All my other siblings are older than me. Okay, bet that, bet that. So your grandmother had adopted you? Yeah. Okay, okay. And how was it growing up in a household like that? I mean, because, you know, most people, like I said, it's a single family. It's a, it's a two-parent. But, you know, me personally, I don't even know too much about a situation like that. So... What was that like growing up for you in a house with so many different siblings? Um, I mean, shit. I mean, I guess it, to me, I didn't really know different, so it was normal to me. But, like, um, every day was something, you know? I grew up in East Oakland. A lot of shit going on all the time. Uh, but, shit, I'm the only one that really looked like me in my family. You know what I mean? Like, if you look at all my yeah. siblings, everybody else, you wouldn't even think that we was related, so... It had its, it's all, there was always something. You know something I mean? going on. There's always something. But shit, I'm grateful for the path that I fucking, that I took. I'm grateful for my grandmother for adopting me. And fuck you to whoever didn't want it. You know? Yeah, no, for sure, for sure, for sure, for sure. I respect that. And so let's talk about as a kid, what was some of the like dreams that you had early on? What were some of the things that you were interested in early on? When I was a kid, I wanted to be a lawyer. A lawyer? Yeah, I didn't even, rap wasn't even really, like, on my radar. I used to, when I was a kid, though, one thing about music is when I would put headphones in, everything would turn into a music video. Like, this, whoever didn't matter <laughs> whose song it was, what what was going on, it would just... You could see know, it. I could just see 
myself making a music video for anybody's song. So yeah. I guess in the back of my mind, music was always something that was on my heart, but I wanted to be a lawyer. I had a smart ass mouth. I was about to say, you know, you had to be arguing your grandma down. I had a smart ass mouth when I was a kid. Yeah. What type of kid were you in school? Oh man. Um, I was one of the smart kids that got in trouble a lot. I got, in a lot of trouble. I don't think that I went to a school before I got locked up that I didn't get kicked out of. Okay. okay. You didn't go to school that you didn't get kicked out of? I don't I don't think I went to uh, elementary school. I made it through the, my whole elementary school, but I got kicked out of my middle school twice. Okay. I got locked up when I was in high school, but I got kicked out of the first high school I went to before I got locked up. Okay. I could feel that. I got kicked out of middle school and high school too, so I could feel that. I could feel that. So let's talk about I don't want to get speed up into when you got locked up yet, but when when you were going throughout school, what were some of the the influences you had? Obviously, you know you were going to school every day, or maybe you were skipping. But uh, what actually, were some of the influences? What's crazy around is you? I wasn't even I wasn't even skipping school. School was interesting to me. I was I wasn't doing what I was supposed to be doing at school, but school was like a getaway for me because my home life was like crazy. It was crazy. So like going to school and shit, like seeing people. Like having friends and shit like that, it kind of like uh, was like, in a sense, it was like a second home for me going to school and shit like that. I ate more at school than I ate at home. I feel that. So I used to love the free you know lunches. I, mean? I didn't. I wasn't really. And get the free lunches at that. Free breakfast. Free. And you get cool with the lunch ladies. They gonna so slide they you gonna a slide, couple. They gonna slide you something. They gonna slide you a couple. But um, shit. I, school man. I got good grades, but I got in trouble a lot. Okay. Okay. So let's get into because you said it was high school when you got locked up, right? Yeah. What what age do you remember? I was right before I was sixteen. Right before yeah. you were sixteen. Yeah. And I don't know the details or anything. I don't, I don't want to know any of the details of what happened. I don't but know the details. I feel that. <laughs> but when once you had you know you ended up having to serve your time or whatever, what were some of the biggest things that you learned throughout that period? And how how long did it last? How how long did you serve? I was in jail for three years. Um, I got out after I graduated. It was one of the conditions of my release. But um, shit, I learned a lot in jail. I didn't really like talking to people my age and shit like that because I felt like everybody in my situation was only the same in my situation. So I like talking to people that have been in jail for longer than me and like thinking about and like um, asking them what they would do different or if they would go back to the same kind of shit. Like, you know what I mean? Just yeah. getting like the perspective of people that's been here for a long time. If it's something that they can see themselves doing as a career, or like, you know, because when I yeah. went to jail, I didn't, I'm not going to lie and say I went to jail and I was like, I'm never committing a crime again. You know? Okay. So you didn't have that mindset of no, like, I'm not no. doing this. Fuck no. I You're like, like, my mindset was, how better? can I do this better? You know what I mean? Okay. Okay. But by the time I got out, my mindset had completely changed. Like the, the way that I thought, the way that I looked at the world, the way that I like, you know, and processed what? information and shit was different. For sure, for sure. And what made that what made that turn for you? Like, when when was when did that happen throughout the three years, where you were like, you know what, this ain't it. I'm gonna go home and I'm gonna try something different. One of my best friends died while I was locked up. Uh, I grew up with like two, three years old until I was to the point that I went to jail. And what changed my outlook on that was was realizing like all the shit that I was missing out on. When I got out, my little sister was grown and shit, cussing, doing all types of shit. My little brother was working my friends was gone i just realized how much time i was missing and what was more important if it was like trying to make a dollar or being around you know yeah yeah for sure i'd much rather be around and so since it was three years you got out at 19 yep 19 right before my 19th birthday right before your 19th birthday yep. that's one way to celebrate it you gotta to, get out bro. man what'd you I'm do for you. your 19th birthday went back to jail but that took a time what the <laughs> <laughs> Only a couple of days though. Just a couple of days. It was like a little thirty day little violation like, or something. It was like seventeen days exactly. Okay, okay, okay. It but, wasn't a violation. It was. It wasn't a new case though. It was for a case I caught while I was in jail. Okay, yeah. we ain't gotta get into that. Yeah. We ain't gotta get into that. But so when you were nineteen, and let's say after the seventeen days. Mm. When you got out, what were you doing? What What was your mind on? Because now you're like, bro, okay. I got out. I just got back. I came in. back. To, I came back to the hood. Like when I got 
when I went back to jail, I went to the worst jail. I was in Stockton and I was in Supermax. Um, so explain that for people that don't know. Uh, it's a 23 hour lockdown. You come out for an hour a day, probably 30 minutes in the morning, 30 minutes at night. Your food get fed to you through your door. Um, you know, shower maybe every two or three days. Nothing crazy. I mean, you know, jail shit, just okay. locked down for like violent offenders and shit. Okay. But when I got out, I I came back to my hood and everybody was making music. Everybody was rapping. And I knew what I was doing the whole time I was locked up was just writing songs and shit. So one of my closest friends, his name is Isaiah, shout out to you. Um, he paid for my first studio session. And I what? went in there and I recorded a song and I fucking hated it. <laughs> and I recorded it again and I fucking hated it again. And then I recorded it again. I kept re-recording the same song until I felt like it was good enough. And I came back to my hood and put it out there. Okay. Like that. I just put it on the fucking internet and my uncle found it. Of all people. Yeah, uncle found it. Yeah, my uncle found it. Okay. And, and obviously that means something. So what, what happened once your uncle found it? <laughs> when my uncle found it, this is what I meant when I said sign to the streets. I know a lot of people say that because they want to sound like, you know, they from the streets and shit. But okay. I mean it like my uncle, he was trapping and he used a lot of the money that he was making trapping to fund my music. Oh, okay, um, so he was helping push your craft. Yeah, he was paying from for his my videos. He was, yeah, he was paying for my videos, my studio sessions until he got to a point where he was like, "This shit's all mad expensive." So how about we just get you a studio? So we bought a studio. We bought a building or leased a building on MacArthur in Oakland, and then we set a studio up in there. So this was in the Bay, still. Yeah, when I was nineteen. That's crazy, and this has all happened just after your first song. Yeah, I, 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 I'm not going to lie. I came to him and I told him, I was like, I rap better than everybody over here. And he was like, yeah, <laughs> all right. But his son was rapping. Everybody was rapping for him. And okay. he was like, all right, you're right. So he heard my shit. He was like, all right, you're right. You do rap better than everybody that's over here. And he just went all in. Like we, That's where the concept of like, um, if one person wins, everybody wins came from. You know, with us, it was like we all get behind one thing. And as soon as that person pop off, then everybody wins pop off you know yeah what I mean? and that's what we tried to push and then so from there you get you're in your own studio mm -hmm. you know obviously you and your uncle figured I out fucked it off i was too young what you mean i fucked it off i was too young i i was in there doing whatever having hoes in there just partying uh, yeah everybody in there just having my friends i'm 19 i just got out of jail like i ain't even got to do nothing for real you know what i mean so yeah having yeah. all of this shit just handed to me i didn't know how to you know how to navigate i didn't know how to like be grateful and appreciate it the right way. I had all my friends in there. We were smoking, drinking, fucking the studio up, getting drunk and shit like that. He's come, my uncle coming in the morning and shit dirty. Eventually, he just got tired of it. He used to tell me about it all the time. He was like, "This your <laughs> shit. It's not they shit. So if it get fucked up, you gonna it's be the one you. that lose." And I had, I, I've fucking been down that road a million times in my life. But um, that was one of the first times that I was like, uh more focused on making sure that everybody else was good mm -hmm. instead of myself, you know what I mean? And putting myself in a bad position. So one day I wake up and I go to cut on the lights and they just don't turn on. In the studio. Yeah. So I go back to the hood and I tell my uncle, I was like, the lights out. He was like, I know. So <laughs> I got the notice. <laughs> yeah, I got the notice. But I've been telling you for a year now that, you know, so if you want to keep doing it, you're going to have to fund it or you're going to have to pay for it. I'll keep pushing what I can push, but I'm not doing that for you no more because you yeah. don't know how to appreciate it. And that was the first time I lost something because I was trying to be good to somebody else, you know? I feel that. I feel that. I'm trying to put everybody on. Yeah. Now, at the time, I know you said your friends were rapping. Were they using the studio, too? One of them was in the, well, two of them. Well, my uncle's son, which is my cousin, and my brother, basically. Okay. We're not related, but shit don't make us no closer. His name Buddha. Shout out to you. Um... Yeah, but we was in there, we was rapping, but we was fucking everything up, really. You know, the rap, the the music that we was putting out and shit was cool and everything, but it just wasn't, we just didn't have the right formula for the amount of money we was spending, the amount of money yeah. was coming out versus what was going in. We didn't know how to release music. We didn't know what DSPs or, like, fucking distribution or none of that shit was at the time. And so we... Making shit and putting it out, not even mixed or mastered. Just and was it a SoundCloud, like, YouTube type way? SoundCloud, YouTube, yeah, that's really it. I ain't even fucking know Spotify and all of that shit was a thing back then. Yeah, yeah. I don't even know if it was a thing back then, actually, but if it was, I didn't know about it. 
about seven years. Yeah, like 2017, 2016, right? Yep, around that time. Yeah, yeah. It, it was probably just starting to pop off a little bit. Yeah. Just starting to pop off a little bit. Okay, so when did things start to speed up for you? So you get out of that studio, you're like, dang, <laughs> I lost funny, it. It's a funny fucking story. Um, I was on Craigslist, right? After all of this shit go down, and said, I'm like, damn, I got to get a job now. You know? Oh, so, so you, you just said, you know. I didn't what, say fuck even... music, but I was like, I didn't have the funding and shit that I needed. Yeah, like, yeah. you know, I needed more than just, I still needed to be able to live my life. You know? Yeah, I got I got to provide more. for myself. Exactly. Um, So I'm on Craigslist, and I'm looking at these fucking, these ads and shit. And one of the ads says, make up to $2,000 a week and be your own boss. And I was like, hell fucking yeah, I clicked that shit. <laughs> I go to the interview the next day, I get to the interview, and it's these two dudes, they doing, they're like uh, sales people they do sales and shit yeah um i start working with them you know i'm making my money doing sales and shit like that and then one day i find out that this shit is a whole like pyramid scheme type shit so uh oh. i tell the guy i asked the guy like i want all my money bro like i don't want all the money you making off of me and you could keep doing what you're doing to them but not to me and he wasn't going for it so, so he, he like, called him out yeah early too super early i was probably working there for a month and he was On like Nigga. he was like no the fuck i look like you know this that's not how the business go i don't even fuck with you like that I don't yeah. know you like that so I was like alright fuck y'all I had my niggas pull up it was, it all, a lot of shit was going on because we was right down the street from this shit I was like alright y'all think that this shit you think it's a game that was when I was stupid though that was when I thought that you could incorporate like street shit to everything but you can't yeah you can't that was what I tried to do so you were still like hang, hanging out in the hood hanging out with yeah I live right down the street you. I was in the street every fucking day all day Um, but yeah so he fired me and shit like that and then I go back home, I'm like, fuck it, I'm putting everything into the music again. So I put my everything back into the music, and then I drop a song, and he hits me up. The dude I was working for, his name is Omar. What? I ain't going to say shout out to Omar, but you know. <laughs> uh, but yeah, he's still my boy to this day. Uh, he's my personal manager. But um, yeah, he hit me up. He said, I could help you with this shit. And I was like, you wasn't trying to help me with that shit. What you want something yeah. to do with some shit like this for? You've heard my music before. Why you want to? And... I just gave him a chance, but I was in Oakland at the time, so we started going to San Jose, going to these clubs and shit, promoting at these clubs, meeting DJs. Um, and he was setting this stuff up for you? Yeah, yeah, pretty much. Yeah, he's a like a club rat, pretty much. Shit. Okay. He ain't gonna hold you. But um, yeah, we started going to these clubs, getting my putting my music, getting the DJs and shit to play my music and stuff like that, and then a producer, a Bay Area, leg- a Bay Area fucking legend, RP to you, Tracks a Million. Um, he hit me in my DM and he was like, I want to work. So I got in the studio with him. We ended up making a whole project together. Dang. Yeah, we made the whole project. We released the project. Um, I started getting traction, started getting noticed by these labels. Um, and then that's when I started coming to L.A. just to record, though, at first. Okay. I met a guy named Andrew, Andrew Grant. He's the president of A&R at, uh, what is it, um, Warner right now? Okay. Yeah. And Andrew Grant, you said. Yeah, he started putting me in these studios, getting me like um in the faces of the right people and shit like that, people that I wanted to meet, and it just took off from there. Not to cut you off at this time, how old were you? 21. Well, 21. So this, the, San Jose, the San Jose shit, that I, the, the shit I was doing in San Jose and stuff like that, I was doing it for maybe like a year and a half, two years. Okay. Going to clubs, performing, doing venues and stuff in San Jose, Bay Area. So I'm from Oakland, but San Jose is where I got my love from. It took for me to get out of yeah, to get out that the city. city where everybody knows you for you to blow up, and that's weird to me, but it's whatever. That's how I go. That's how I go for a lot of people. That's how I go for a lot of people. So once you started, you know, like you said, Andrew Grant put you in the right rooms with the right people. At that point, you, you know, you're two years out of jail. Mm-hmm. Also, two years in the rap game. Things really are speeding up super quick for you. Everything's happening super fast. What's your perspective on, like, What's going on? Are you just in the moment like, this is what we're doing today? I'm not even thinking about this whole situation right now. I was thinking they want to pay me to do some shit I do for free every day. So bring that, that, shit, ain't bad. Yeah. Bring that shit through. I do this shit every day for free. So that's my whole idea. I was like, I just show me some money for real. Yeah. And I shouldn't have that mindset. But So... Just for some advice for upcoming artists like that maybe would be in your situation that... Say no first. That's really the best advice I could give you. Say no first. If somebody see potential in you, then that means a lot of people see potential in you. 
if when it comes to these labels, if one of them wants you, a few of them want you. So don't go with the first person or the first label that reach out to you or the first offer that you got. Actually do some research, learn the game. You know what I mean? Your value is not going to decrease in a couple of weeks. Um, That's so be game. patient. That's game. That's game. So, okay, once you, you know, you, like I said, you're in the right rooms. Now you got this new perspective of, you know, you, hey, they're paying me to do this. Mm-hmm. What was some of, like, the most memorable moments that you had throughout that journey? Of oh, like- man, my first big session at APG with um uh, with uh, a super dope engineer. His name's John Will. He recorded Knockout for me. But that was the first time I was in a studio setting where, like, my name was on the table. They were like, welcome. Yeah. You know, and they had, like, the food, the drinks, the everything that you could possibly need. I had all my friends with me, you know. Uh, my brother had some of his friends down from, like, uh, from San Diego, and it just felt like okay, like an out-of-body experience. Like, just, it was like one of those studio sessions and shit that you see on YouTube where you're looking up, like, rappers and yeah. studio sessions and shit. Like, it was just, for that, that was, like, a pivotal moment for me. That's when I realized, oh, this shit real. Yeah, yeah, for sure. So, how many songs did you drop with that group or with that with that label, however you want to call it, projects did you drop? Five. Five six, projects? No, five or six singles. Singles. They wanted a project from me, and that, at that point, I wasn't getting the kind of, let's just say, love that I wanted, so I, was, I wasn't as inclined to continue working with them. Okay, and you're talking about love from the label, not love from your fans. Yeah, no, I love my fans. My fans love me, and I appreciate that. I'm grateful for y'all. But yeah, we got to make that clear. I just want to nah, make sure yeah, I'm not talking about. I'm, talk, I'm talking about the folks up there, <laughs> the people upstairs. I ain't talking about nobody. Yeah, and we don't have to get into any details of, of your situation, but obviously because there's artists right now that are in that same situation, and there's going to be artists that are upcoming going to be in a situation like that. One, was something? Obviously, you said say no first. But what's something that maybe they could, like, yo, this is a red flag if this happens? Or as well as what's a mindset to come in to the situation with so that they can set up something that... You have to believe in yourself more than they do. You have to believe in what you're doing more than the people that are trying to make money off of you because there's going to be times where they're going to want you to do shit that you don't want to do, and you have to know, like, is... Am I going to sell out because they paying me or am I going to believe in myself enough to know that I need to walk away from this situation? You know what I mean? Yeah. And a lot of people who stay in bad situations is because they don't believe that they can find a better one. You know what I mean? Mm. That's where believing in yourself comes from. If you believe in yourself enough, then you know that you could get out of that situation and it might not be pretty at first, but you got to push through it. and it's going to happen yeah. for you. You got to have faith. So off of the serious note, bro, what was it like working with some of these stars? Because I was on YouTube today watching some music videos oh, with some big names. And I'll let you introduce who you want to introduce to the table. But you, you uh, got some big features out. Um, big my features. Favorite, the, the, my favorite artist that I've worked with so far is probably Lil' Keith. Rest in peace. Um, Rest in peace, Lil' Keith. A Kid. real humble, real genuine person. You couldn't, if, you couldn't. You, you wouldn't know that he was who he was if you had just met him on the street. Like, you mm-hmm. know, he's genuine, solid dude. He would, you know, we went and hung out after the after the shoot, before the shoot. Um, he came up to me. He introduced himself, even though I was the one, you know, coming to Atlanta to work with him. Um, I mean, he was just a real humble dude, and that, you don't find that shit a lot in the industry because people, you know, get to a certain point and they become big-headed and start to forget that they're people, too. Yeah. You know what I mean? So... That was one of my favorites. Lil Yachty was a super dope guy, too. Real genuine. That video is crazy, bro. Yeah. Lil Yachty was a super genuine person. I respect what he did, and I respect what he's doing still to this day. Shit. Um, my Cowboy feature, that came because he liked the song. Um, really? Yeah. I wasn't actually in the building when the song got played for him. He just jumped on it, and they sent it back to me, and I was like, damn. Yeah. That's dope. That's actually the first song I played. And I... I it's crazy because I think that that's my best feature. Like as far as like matching the energy energy that I brought to a song. Yeah. Like I feel like he really bodied that shit. Um, for sure. For sure. No, not no shade to Cowboy. I'm not no shade to Keith or or to Yachty or nothing like that. It just with that song, it seemed like he liked the song enough to put the effort. Like he wanted to do that shit. Yeah. Know? Like he wanted to kill it. Yeah. Super genuine I'm, person, man. Dope, dope guy. Um, my manager put that. He set that play up for me. Okay, your manager played it for him. 
Yeah. Okay. That's what's up. So now I was just talking to you today. You haven't dropped music in two years, right? Two long years. So tell the people what you've been up to. <sighs> Damn, man. Throughout these two years, bro. Because your most recent joint is famous, right? Yeah. That joint's hard too, by the way. I just got out. What? <laughs> I know, man. It's been a long time, but um, yeah, I was I was locked up. I just got out again last year. Uh, I know what I said about you know being different and shit like that, but shit happens. Okay, okay, and it's, it. That was a part of the reason why I hadn't dropped in the time that I hadn't dropped. I knew I was going to jail and shit, so. Um, Okay, so you it was a situation where you it was a conscious choice, you know what I mean? I knew I wasn't going to be able to move or promote how I wanted to be able to, so yeah, I just waited. Okay, so hold on, going back to jail after (laughs) bro, having like I said, these crazy features, your whole life really didn't change. You went through the ups and downs of the artist. I I want to clear something up for for everybody right now that's going to see this podcast and shit. Um. Those features do not mean that I'm rich. Being at a certain point in music does not make necessarily mean that you're rich. You know what I mean? I still go through shit every day just like everybody else. Only difference is now people know what I look like. That's it. Yeah. You know what I mean? But um That's kind of what I was talking about though. That case I caught before. When I the case that I was fight that I was fighting for that whole time I caught before I even started getting recognition from record deals. It's kind of like it happened like simultaneously oh. I caught this case And then the next Probably like the next week I started getting calls from LA So I had to bail out of jail And then I Went to LA Started working COVID happened All of this You know And then it just You held were up. in a storm Bro It was, it was yeah, crazy it was a time lot. It was huh? a lot It was a lot It was a lot Um, I started doing this the, I started working with this label before COVID, like right before COVID. So there was so much shit on the table, so many promises, so much shit that I had to look forward to. And then COVID hit and I couldn't do none of it. Yeah. I couldn't make no money. I couldn't do shows, couldn't do nothing. Everything's closed. So I'm just in this deal, stuck. COVID's going on. I don't have control over what I get to do with it. And then mm-hmm. it just kind of, you know, snowballed into like something that I didn't want to happen. Yeah. So. I mean, what, what was that like? Because everybody knew you once you walked in there, no? Yeah. In jail? Yeah. Yeah. Because it's got to be a whole different situation yeah. now when you're walking in. Yeah. Um. But I wasn't the only rapper that was in there. You know, it was a couple people. Uh, D-Lo was in there. My boy TC was in there. It was a couple of us in there. So uh, it was like that. But if you're in jail, niggas, motherfuckers not trying to, like, Come off as like no dick rider or nothing like that. They'll know who yeah. you is, but they went. They're not gonna be like on your nuts about it. You know what I mean? For you sure. Still, you still got politics. You still got a lot of shit that you got. Rules like, to abide by and everything yeah. like that. Yeah, certain people can't just come up to me and be like, you know, yeah, they gotta go up, through. Man. They gotta go through their people. I gotta talk to my people. All types of shit. Yeah, we ain't gotta get in any of that. But okay, so you get out for the third time, mm-hmm. and you said this. You got out last year in May. Last year in May. Yeah, that's when I met Phrase. That's how this shit came about. I met Phrase maybe a month after I had got out of jail, locked in with Z. We started working. Uh, been working with them for the past year. Shit, just, shit been smooth. Okay, cool. So f- did Phrase hit you up as soon as you got out? Yep, he did. Okay. I, I, he probably hit me up while I was still locked up, but he didn't know I was locked up. I was trying to. <laughs> I was trying to make that shit not as public as like it's not possible. Going on. Yeah, because it was only six months. So I was just like, oh, if okay, I could just disappear okay. for six months and come back, but all my friends on the, inter- yeah. on the internet and shit just posting. Doing a lot. Yeah. Okay. So it kind of became a known thing. But yeah, I locked in with him when, right when I got back to LA. I was probably in LA for a couple of days before I went to the studio. Okay. And what were the first couple of songs that you made once you got, or I guess you, you know, obviously you haven't dropped anything. The first songs that I made with Phrase? Like, what, did you immediately start working on, well, I'm guessing there's a project coming since you're dropping a single. Yeah. So did you immediately start working on something like that where you like, look, I'm going to go ahead. Um. The way that I go about making projects is I feel like it's different than how a lot of people do. I go into I don't go into the studio with like an intention of making a song for the project. I go into the studio and I just do what I feel. 
Okay. You know what I mean? So you capture the moment. You punching in. Exactly. I'm okay. capturing. I, I like to capture the moment. I like to talk about how I feel at that point. You know what I mean? Yeah. Um, going in there with an agenda and shit like that, it kind of you kind of just set yourself up to be disappointed. You know what I mean? Because mm, if you don't make, that. if you go into the studio and you don't make the kind of song that you wanted to make or you don't make the hit that you wanted to make, it was because you weren't being creative. You were working on a kind of like a almost like you're going to work. Yeah. Like you have to do A, B, and C. Exactly. Like there's a format to it. Like with me, there's no format to how I work. There's no like right way or wrong way to do the shit. You just do it. That's the good thing about being a creative and getting paid to like, you know, come up with ideas. There's no right way to do it. Yeah. um, A project for me will come when I feel like I've accumulated that amount of songs that you know? Yeah. So you're just like, look, okay, I got a, I got a, I got a good little amount of bangers. I know I got fucking hits yeah so i could just take 10 of them right now and drop them on a project and I don't feel a lot of people go into album mode they be like i've been working on this shit for six seven months 10 months a year two years all of that shit but you just like, i don't have to do that because i've been working for two years straight without any kind of expectation because i knew i was still stuck in this deal and that i don't get to drop this song so i might as well take this time to practice and I took so every session creating. as like me creating something different and learning what I can do and what I can't do, what I should do, what's good for my brand and shit like that. And then yeah. just honing in on a certain kind of thing and then just making that shit better. So now when you drop this song, is it going to be completely independent? Yes, sir. Clap it up for Y'all myself. got it. That's what I'm talking about. Y'all got to go stream that, bro. Y'all got to go stream that. Name it again. Yes, it's the one we saw. One Mr. We heard. McQueen. Mr. Dropping McQueen. June 16th. All platforms. Make sure you go stream that, but just got independent. That's what I'm talking about. How's yes, that feel, sir. bro? Liberating. It's liberating. Yeah. I've been watching. Um, got the chains off. Yeah, for real. No, dead ass. That's what it felt like. I don't know. I felt like my mindset was different. Like it had me in a very depressed kind of state. You know what I mean? I feel like once I got that contract back signed by my label saying that I was done, like I was like 100 pounds lighter. Not that I could afford to lose no weight. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but um, I was like 100 pounds lighter. I just felt different. Like I was happier yeah. and shit like that. And I used to wonder like while I was in the situation, why good things was happening to me, why I wasn't like happy about it or why I didn't like bring the kind of reaction that it would bring to anybody else. And it was because in the back of my mind, I knew it wasn't, I wasn't where I wanted to be. So now I'm more grateful and I feel like I am more accepting of like my blessings because I know that I could use them. Yeah, mm-hmm. yeah. You couldn't fully appreciate. I couldn't them fully appreciate nothing. I was depressed, man. I was, I don't know. I was in a bad mental state for the past year. Yeah. Well, you out of that now. Straight up. You that, independent, Mister McQueen. Yes, sir. So let's talk about. I know you just touched on it briefly, but I think that was super interesting how you described your recording process. So let's talk about that. Was it like that the whole time when when you started rapping? Like once you got out of jail, you used to win your first session. Were you always punching in, catching the moment, or were you writing? No, I still write a lot to this day. Like I write, I'll hear a beat or something, or like my writing process. I don't when I write music, I don't uh, necessarily write bars. I'll like write a story out. I'll write a scenario out or a situation, or I'll write how some shit played out, and then I'll try to turn it into a song. You know what I mean? Like, I'll write a story So you could put shit. out a book. If I wanted to, but I probably wouldn't do that. That would be crazy, yo. That would put my ass a right bu- back in jail, too. Oh. But, um, <laughs> um, but uh, that type of shit. Like, yeah. just writing a situation out. I don't, I don't sugarcoat shit. I don't do none of that type of shit when I do write the situation out, and then I choose wisely what words I want to use in songs because, you know, okay, it's a lot of shit going on. But, um... That's my writing process and my recording process in certain situations. Sometimes, like, if I'm going to go freestyle, then I'll just listen to a beat and try to be, like, whatever instrument I think is missing. Mm, that's game. Yeah. Both of those are game. Because, one, for all you gangster rappers out there rapping, write, write it out first, and then you can look at it and choose wisely, yeah, I mean, like that said. gives you that gives it gives you substance and it gives you sequence. It makes it so that you're able to tell a story within a song without going from the beginning to the end then back to the middle, then just getting shit all mixed up when you yeah. write your shit out and you got it in front of you then you could go ahead and like tell the story how you want to tell it you just got to figure out the words so why did mr mcqueen become the singer it's catchy as fuck <laughs> <laughs> um it's catchy as fuck i really like the um 
and because the producer that I worked with on this song, I just feel like he put so much time and effort into what we're doing that um, I just feel like this song deserves to be my first single. Mm. You know? um, Punch him in the face when you come out. Straight out the gate, I got to. And it's a combination of what I want to do and what I used to do. So it's an easy way, it's a good way for me to transition into the type of music that I want to make without losing the fan base that I had for the music that I was making. You know what I mean? Okay. Just mixing like... um, It blends the two. Yeah. It's like a perfect transition in a way. Exactly. You, what you're about Even to show Giving people a taste of what I'm about to show them without fully taking away what they have. Yeah, yeah. For sure, for sure, for sure, for sure. I know you said you were working with a certain producer on this. As an independent artist... How different is that process for you? Because I'm sure now you're booking all your own sessions. Now you're paying for the the beats. You're paying for the studios. You're paying for the, you know, everything that goes into pushing a song. You're about to drop a single independent. Like, how different is that process in preparation for dropping? Um, shit, It took a lot of learning. I watched a lot of videos. I looked at a lot of other artists and their process for dropping. But one of the ones that stuck out to me was I was watching an interview from this Bay Area artist, he's from Vallejo. His name is Lil Russell. Have you heard of him? Yeah, yeah, bro. He's uh, he he dropped a lot of free game, a lot of free knowledge and shit like that on his page all the fucking time. He should be getting paid for it. Uh, yeah, um, yeah. But something that he was saying, and this is something that I've been doing now for like the last, I don't know, six seven months since I've been dropping. I was like, if I'm gonna work with a producer, um, I'll buy the beat outright, or we can do splits. And if we're doing splits, we split in everything. If we going if me and you are gonna get fifty percent and then the other fifty percent is gonna go towards production, I mean, or towards like the video the videographers or like the people that are doing like everything else, mm. then what we're paying for has to be equal as well. If we shoot in a video for this song and you're gonna reap the same benefits from it as I am, then you're gonna help me pay for this video. If we're about to do press release that. and shit like that and you get the same percentage as I do, we did the same amount of work on both ends, then you're gonna help me pay for that shit. Yeah. You know what I mean? And if you don't want to do it, then I could buy the beat outright and I'm not, and you just, you know? Yeah, and you just stay out the way and you're yeah, good. Stay out the way and you're good. But, um, um, shit. Sometimes I'll go into work with producers and shit and they'll just want a, their name on it. You know what I mean? Some producers don't want anything more than to their, credit. Just their credit. You know what I mean? Other producers, you have to write a producer agreement, so you usually have to do it with all of them. But, um, you know, points on the song, points on the project, um, percentages royalties shit like that everybody gets everybody gets you know everybody eats in each process it just depends on how you want to you could take what you want up front or you could just you know wait and eat forever yeah that was something that milan was talking about a lot of people yeah. take 100 percent of one thing over a percentage of something that's gonna last for a long time exactly exactly yeah. so for you now how long does that process take to drop a song or to what? to get all the business handled before you, you See, put it out. The, when I started doing this shit, that was something I did not want to have to do. My manager told me he was like, "All you got to do is show up. All that other shit, we'll figure <laughs> it out." I realized hella fast that that's not what that's not the case. Yeah. Um, it depends on who you're working with. Um, if it's a major producer and shit, sometimes that shit could take months. Um, but I like to keep shit in house because, you know, my song the shit gonna be hard whether it's a fucking Metro Boomin or it's a, you know. Somebody random. Because it's Lanny Key. Because it's me. But, um, yeah, just like that. It's just, yeah. I fucking, if it's somebody that I work closely with, it could take a couple days. We could knock the, we could talk about it and have it figured out. Like my brother Cozy, who makes most of my beats, we just talk about it. We got this shit all figured out. I ain't never had to write shit on a piece of paper working with him. You just locked in. Yeah, we just locked in. That's the best way to do it, bro. That's the best way to do it. Got to have personal relationships with the people you work with. That's game. It's, it's important. It's important. And it's also important to establish what a business relationship is and a friendship relationship is. A lot of people Ooh. a lot of people confuse that shit and then they feel let down or disappointed or hurt when the shit hit the fan. But if you took the shit for what it was from the gate, then you wouldn't have had to have those kind of feelings. Yeah, especially when there's people who really they play both roles. Yeah, exactly. They're your friend. And then over here, you know, we got to handle the business, though. Mm -hmm. and that's you, where you got to be able to keep that shit separate. Yeah. Leave that shit How hard is that, bro? Well, me and my brother, the shit's, I've, I don't, I've never had an issue with him. We, we have an understanding, but there have been producers. There's been times when it's been my fault, times when it's been their fault. Producer had more credits or more credibility than I did, wanted more, and I wasn't willing to do it. Or 
I put more work into a song and I wanted more than what the producer wanted. Um, but it's really just about having an understanding of building a basic understanding of your relationship with the person that you're working with and just expecting them to be them. You yeah. know what I mean? Yeah, for sure. You can't expect shit different from a person if you know who they are, you know? Yeah. So along the way, I'm sure you ran into a bunch of those situations. How like how many people would you say that you ended up losing to to business situations? From you know, you just get out at 19. Shit, I ain't lost nobody that I fucking knew. That's for sure. Oh, I like that. Uh, you don't even say no more. That's, that's, that's it. <laughs> you don't even say no more. I lost nobody I need. So can we we can we can say that you're definitely not going back to jail, right? Hell no, I ain't going back. I got, I got her right here to keep me straight. Okay, bet. Can we can we talk about that a little bit? I mean, of course. <laughs> what is that like, bro? Because obviously you moving and grooving, you moving around. Ah, uh, you, you know, you a bigger artist. Being, What's being, it like having you know your your woman there that supports you and and also you know probably probably you know keep you keep you on the right man, track in some situations. It's, it's the best feeling ever. Just knowing that the person that care more the most about you outside of what you can do, you know, is supporting what you do also is just means everything. Especially when it's not something that's guaranteed. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. This rap for sure. shit is not guaranteed for nobody. I could go get a fucking nine to five right now and just be like, fuck it, you know? Yeah, yeah. Yeah. But like to just cause we have ups and downs. I don't always shit, I be broke sometimes. Yeah. You know? And she she held a nigga down. That's really that's what it come down to. <laughs> That's what it come down to. She keep me grounded. She keep me out of trouble. Yeah. Um, A lot of times rappers and shit, they say it's not a good idea to have a girlfriend while you're trying to pop off and shit. But I feel like it's either go to jail or have a girlfriend. Because I'm too easily influenced by, uh, and I ain't even too afraid to admit this shit. That right now, I'm not ready. I can't lie to anybody and say that if it's 100000 on the floor, I ain't going to pick it up. Yeah. You know, but yeah. That's, that's why I got her. She keep me grounded. She <laughs> let me know that there's more to life and that the shit's not worth it. Yeah, like so. bro, you gonna pick up some more down the road? You good? Straight you up. leave that one on the floor. Walk by. <laughs> <Straight> <laughs> up, yeah. Leave that one where it's at. Yeah. Now I feel that. So can we expect? Because COVID's over. Yeah. Can we expect any shows? Soon. I got actually. I have a show in San Diego and one in Fresno, July second and July July first in San Diego and July second. In Fresno. I'll get more information about that for you. We playing a new joint at the shows. Of course, of course, of course. And you know, I got to hit them with some of the old shit, but um, definitely going to get some of the new ones out there. I got to get people more accustomed to the sound. Yeah. What is the farthest you've gone when it comes to touring? I've never been on a real tour. I've been, the furthest I've gone, like, musically is New York. So the other side of the states, I've never, been say, the, I've never been on a real tour. This I've never been on a tour. That's not, that's not, that wasn't a tour. I got, <laughs> I got, I got booked for a show and, uh, um, and a video with a New York artist. Okay. So I went out there to perform the song and shoot the video for the song that we performed. Okay. So that's it wasn't, a, it wasn't a tour. I feel it was, that. It was just a turnaround. We need a Laney Keys tour. We need it. We need it. We got to get some headliners though. Where's Omar? <laughs> that's funny that is funny as fuck because if you knew omar that's damn near that's damn near like that's always the that question with bro where's to, omar? where the fuck is omar <laughs> that's, yeah. funny, bro. that's in the works though we get into it we yeah on it yeah i mean doing it independent bro it, it, it takes longer bro it's harder but i guarantee you and i'm not saying like i'm speaking from experience but just speaking from stories i've heard and from what people obviously what we see mm -hmm. it's gonna be worth it bro the yeah. independent route is yeah. 100 percent gonna be worth it i know there's people who say like you need to take you know partner up with certain people so that you can reach certain levels but what i feel like with you and your story bro you kind of already did that yeah i did i already I already, already took that step. Yeah, and I've already fucked up in every way that you can. So all that there, I've learned from all my mistakes, all that there is to do now is grow. So. Yeah, yeah, for yeah. sure. So to wrap this up, I always ask three questions. First things first, let them know where to get your music. Tell them your name one more time. Tell them the name of the song Laney one more Keys, time. Laney Keys, L-A-N-E-Y, K-E-Y-Z. You can find my music on all streaming music platforms, YouTube, Spotify, 
Apple Music, iTunes, Deezer, whatever you use to listen to music, you can find me. And the second is going to be advice for people who maybe aren't just like you, but people who may be coming up after you in the same lane when it comes to, you know, you're talking about your personal story. You've been through a couple of struggles, you know, like you say, signed to the streets and all these different things. But what's some advice to them when it comes to rapping and, and telling their story in the appropriate way? Because because right now we, we're dealing with a lot of a lot of things when it comes to, you know, people attacking rap in general. And just, you mentioned it a little bit before. But what's what's some advice when it comes to that certain lyrics? Just just be a self, man. For real, the best thing that I could tell you is just be yourself. And I say this shit all the time. Every day, if you look at my story, you want to see it say just be yourself. But um, because there's a lot of people in here that are portraying a certain image and they're getting themselves in fucked up situations for it. Like, um, if you're not no gangster, then fucking don't rap like a gangster. There's nobody else in the world that is like you. Somebody's going to like what you're doing because they're not going to be able to get it from anybody else. So just be yourself, you know? Yeah. That shit will take you a long way. I think it's crazy that we're in Beverly Hills, and as soon as you started trying to talk about the gangster stuff, some sirens started coming by. What's going on? <laughs> in Beverly Hills, man. You tell me. I thought this was a good area. <laughs> me too, bro. Me too. But no, nah, that's game. That's game. You definitely just got to be yourself. Artist, you got to pick up Somebody on Somebody going to fuck with you. Straight up. Somebody going to fuck with you. Just be yourself. It was his uncle. It was my own damn uncle. <laughs> Didn't know that was going to happen at all, bro. Yeah, uncle oh. popped out the woodworks like, look, bro, I, hey, we got to make look, this happen. Check this out. You actually are better than everybody <laughs> out here. I'm tripping. You. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> and if you feel that way about it, don't don't, don't shortchange yourself. If you feel like you're that guy, then come outside every day like I'm him. Yeah. You know? Don't don't let nobody tell you that you're not. That's the I mean, the only person that the only person that's going to stop you from being who you want to be is you. So... Come outside, do your thing, and just outwork everybody. That's the advice of the day. Come outside every day like I'm him. I'm him. I feel that. So my last question to you, bro, before we get up out of here, is this is going to be advice. It's kind of more personal and maybe just um, more of your peers. Mm -hmm. But obviously you touched on your relationship a little bit. You know, you touched on your your balancing out the music, right? You're balancing out coming into being an independent artist. What's some advice for people who are going to be standing on their own two feet when it comes to, you know, now you're running, basically running your own business. You know, you're, you're a man of the household. You're, you got a woman holding you down. You got to stand on business when it comes to getting certain stuff out. Stand on business when it comes to holding up certain relationships. What's some advice for people who are going to be taking that first step of standing on their own two feet as an artist, as a businessman in life in general? Sometimes you got to put your pride to the side. That's the best advice I could give. You're not always going to like everybody. You're not always going to want to do everything. But sometimes you have to do what you have to do to get to where you want to be. Sometimes you have to do what you have to do so that you could do what you want to do. Mm. You know? Yeah. And as, as if you're talking specifically to like like men, I know that men have a hard time allowing themselves to be second. You know what I mean? I definitely know what you mean. <laughs> or allowing themselves to like take a step back or let somebody else shine yeah. in order for you to get, and you have to learn how to put your pride to the side. Your patience is everything. And um, as soon as you master that, you got it and keep God first. That's all I can really tell you. Keep God first and come outside like I'm him. Like I'm him. <laughs> him. All right, again, man, I'm here with Laney Keys. I appreciate your time today, bro. I appreciate you sharing your story. Of course, of course, anytime. And also, make sure you guys go check out his new song coming out June 16th, right? June 16th, Mr. man. McQueen. Mr. McQueen, all streaming platforms, Apple Music, Spotify, YouTube, all that shit. When you sleep, just leave it playing on repeat because, bro, independent now. Put Jeez. some money in his pocket. Oh, just, man. you know, let it go on repeat Earth. while you sleep. It's all Earth. good. It ain't doing Earth. you nothing. You Earth. know what I'm saying? <laughs> you too, though. No, I got you. <laughs> I got you. Now, but June 16th. June 16th, make, man. Make sure June 16th, you go drop it. save the date. Save the date. Put it in your phones, man. Alarm, whatever, however you get your phone to tell you when it's the 16th, make it happen. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. I'm going to make a video that day just so you know I ain't capping. You're going to see yes, me sir. bumping that joint. I'm going to put so it on my story. You, you, you see, see this? Me. So if, I, if, if we don't I'm see the video, <laughs> we don't see the video. 
<laughs> if I'm cap, y'all let me know in the comments. Y'all gonna know first. And bro gonna probably block me and all that. We're gonna have to take this down. Cause I, ain't gonna, I, ain't, I ain't gonna block you. I'm gonna let you, I'm gonna let you keep following me so you can see all the success. You know what I mean? <laughs> but now nah, I'm posting that video June 16th. Make sure you go stream Brad New Song, he newly independent. Mr. Yeah. McQueen, again, thank you for being here. Yada Talk, thank you guys for tuning in with another episode of Yada Talk. We're here every two weeks. Make sure you go like, make sure you go subscribe, and make sure you go share with all your friends. Share a favorite clip, share a favorite quote. Bro gave a lot of game. He talked about some artists that are probably your favorite artists too. But if you are an upcoming artist, he gave a lot of game for you, and you got to pick up on it. Again, thank you guys. I appreciate you, and we'll see you next week. Peace. Yes, sir. Push that button. Push that button. Hater, shawty want a risk taker, heartbreaker. Shawty want a rent payer, big player. I got on a risk breaker.